Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. This is kind of an experiment. We've never done WebEx before. Um, if you can hear me and see me, the people on screen, give a little wave. Okay. I'm hoping, thank you. Okay, great. Um, I'm hoping that um, you'll um, mute right now so everybody can hear whoever's speaking at the moment. So I want to I wanna thank you. I thought, thank everybody for, for joining me. Um, the, um, the first thing I want to do is to introduce the people who are going to be our experts joining us. Um, the first is Senator Heather Staines. And Senator Staines it has been the uh, represent, represented the Illinois 7th District in the Illinois State Senate since 2008. She is chair of the um, Appropriations Committee and chair of the second Appropriations Committee and is one of the leading, um, I would say, people who get things done in the Senate, um, among other things. Um, Heather has um, helped pass marriage equality. She got the Equal Rights Amendment passed, but beyond that, um, she has um, uh, done significant work in making nursing homes better, um, the state's Medicaid program. She um, has um, been active on the environment, reducing mercury pollution, in, in Illinois, um, and really and truly, the central issues in Springfield, Heather Staines is a top leader. Um, in addition, someone I haven't met before, and I'm going to actually meet him online here for the first time, Michael Linden, who is Executive Director of the Groundwork Collaborative, and he is um, an economic policy expert. He was he worked for Senator uh, Pat Murray on the budget uh, on the budget committee, and he also was uh, the director of economic policy at the Center for American Progress. So he is a progressive economic expert. Um, and I want to thank them both so much for, for coming. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to have uh, Miguel. We're going to go right to questions. Um, no opening statements. We're going to go right to questions. And we're going to have Miguel read the, the questions. And then the three of us um, at various times will answer the questions. And they came from you, from the people who are part of this. Sent the uh, sent the questions. Um, none of us, uh, the speakers, made up anything. It's all it has all come. We received um, a couple thousand of them, and they've been grouped. And and of course, the focus is really um, unemployment insurance and how that program is, or um, you know, some of the, the problems that we're having, but. The, um, that was passed in the CARES Act. And the other is what kind of economic stimulus money is going to come to each of you. So I think, Miguel, we should just get right started with questions. All right. Hello, Congresswoman. Um, so our first question uh, asked by, it was asked by several people, but I um, wanted to make sure we addressed it. So, um, how do you begin to apply for unemployment benefits? And that question was asked by David Bailey from Olmet, Desiree Bacala from Where I Live Park, and Bartolome from the Wildwood Forest Glen area of Chicago, uh, as well as many others. What I have to do well, first of all, um, I, I'm going to just say a few things about un unemployment insurance. Um, those of you who are eligible, of course, are able to um, apply right now. And I'm going to ask um, Heather to talk about, um, Senator Staines to talk about exactly how that, that happens. Um, and later on, we're going to talk about people who previously were not eligible we're not involved in unemployment insurance. That would be for um, independent contractors, self-employed people, 
Um, so we, we will t we will talk about that. The Democrats were very happy when we passed the um, CARES Act to add another six six hundred dollars a month. Is that right? Six I mean a week. Six hundred dollars a week, which is a, a, a goodly uh, sum of money. Um, and so, um, Heather, I wondered if you would uh, talk now about how one applies now for employment insurance and when um, people are wasting their money, if not over. Can you hear me now? Un unemployment insurance in Illinois is handled by the Illinois Department of Employment Security. Uh, the first thing you have to do, there's two different ways. You can go to the call number, which is 1-800-244-5631, or you can apply online at ipes.illinois.gov. And then you go there and you click on the tab at the top that says individuals, and then you can select unemployment compensation. Now, they are, because of the huge volume we've been seeing, they do ask that people, uh, if you're applying online, do so, or trying to call on specific days to try to cut down the volume and have increased the odds that people will get through. So if your last name begins with A through M, you're asked to file on Sundays, Tuesdays, or Thursdays. Those with the names beginning with letters N through Z are asked to file on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And Saturdays are available for anyone to accommodate those who might not have been able to meet their, you know, allotted window. Now, is it uh, if they follow those um, last names, is it is it much easier to get through? Well, <laughs> you know, I, I still haven't heard any reports of concerns on making it through. I will say that they've hired 73 more employees to staff all of their call lines. Um, they also contacted with outside employers, and beginning later this week, they've also they've instituted they've uh, contracted with outside um, technology firms to handle a lot of the basic Q and A responses um, through that automated system to try to free up the individuals who have real questions that need to get answered that aren't sort of standard questions. So the governor and his team have been working diligently to try to uh, in reduce the problems. We know they still exist. What I would say is that, you know, the number of filings we've had in the first five weeks of COVID starting in March to April 4th, by those five weeks are more than all the claims that got submitted in all of last year. It's also five times the number of claims you got in the first five weeks of the 2007-2008 um, recession. So it really has been overwhelming the system, just as it has in other states. Uh, the governor's really been working to wrap it up, and I apologize for the inconvenience and problems people are having. Uh, they really are trying to put more resources on it to try to reduce those problems. The governor just spoke that, about that again today all this, at his daily press conference about all the steps uh, he's trying to take to address the concerns. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. Okay, so um, I am an independent contractor. I have an LLC. Um, um, I've been in contact with uh, Congresswoman Schakowsky's office, and they've been nothing but helpful to, towards me. Um, very responsive, uh, and I really appreciate it. Um, next question then is, so I did apply for unemployment insurance and I also applied for the PPP and like, so I now I'm at this weird, this holding pattern with the PPP where Chase is telling me that they're waiting for the SBA to give them a loan number. Is that correct or is that a thing? I just feel like there's so much confusion going around. The, PP, the PPP program, which actually, um, I think we're gonna do it, we'll do another town hall about uh, the PPP program. That is the Paycheck Protection Program. And that's really for small, that's for small businesses to be able to keep their employees on the, pay, on the payroll. So if uh, I'm an for, LLC, it, it, would I not be eligible to apply for that? Yes, you are eligible to apply for that. Okay. Yes, yes. 
Okay, Miguel, um, we're going to um, ask the, the next question that you have. Sure. Sure. The next, the question, next question is, is uh, a two-parter. Two I get Social Security and SSDI. And SSDI. Will I, Will I need to do anything to get my stimulus check? I have not been filing taxes because my income falls below the threshold. How can I get my stimulus funds? And the second part to that is, how can I get the IRS, my direct deposit information, to get these funds faster? Okay, well, let me let me just say about um, Social Security. You know, at first, um, the way the program was rolling out, they wanted people who got Social Security but don't pay taxes um, to have to file anyway. Well, that was just ridiculous because if you're on Social Security, the government has your address. You get a check every month um, one way or another. So um, now there is no requirement. Seniors, uh, people on, on Social Security um, can, will get that check. And those checks um, should be going out um, this week, is it? Direct deposits. If it's a direct deposit, it's going out this week, and then they're going to start on the 29th um, to to get the other to get the other checks out. Um, but I'm uh, I'm I'm wondering, Michael, Michael Linden, if you would help answer um, these these questions, and particularly the second part about um, how can I get the IRS my direct deposit information. So that they can um, get the fund, I can get the funds faster. Um, it's very much, uh, Congresswoman. Thanks very much for having me. So, uh, if you uh, if you um, filed your taxes in the last couple of two years and gave the IRS direct deposit information as part of your tax return, <laughs> and you don't have to do anything. If you didn't do that, you can go to um, the IRS, the IRS is going to be releasing an app, I don't think it has done that yet, where you can actually um, uh, submit your direct deposit information on, on that app. It's going to be called uh, Get My Payment is the app. Uh, so hopefully that will be out later this week and you'll be able to submit your direct deposit information that way. But I want to emphasize that if you already give the IRS direct deposit information through previous tax returns, they have it and your check will come automatically. And just reinforcing what the Congresswoman said, if you're a social security recipient and that includes SSDI, disability insurance, you'll get your payment automatically. Uh, it's probably not true for supplemental security income. If you are on SSI, which is different than social security, you will have to file uh, a separate form. You're muted, Jan. Sorry, Congressman, I didn't I didn't hear the question because the, the question is if people are not um, if they don't have access to a computer, is there some way that they can get um, the information to the IRS? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I don't think the IRS has contemplated that yet. My understanding is that we're working right now to have the IRS create, create um, some paperwork so you can obtain and fill it out. Um, and the details are still being worked on. So we want to make sure we can be, be able to help everyone. Okay, question number three, Miguel. All right. All right. Our next, Our next question, question is... So, so I need to apply for unemployment, but the Joslink site is not working. I have never had a password and I can't get in. It's impossible to reach a human being. How can I receive benefits when I'm locked out of the system? Problems the kinks we're trying to work out or the state is trying to work out of the system. Heather, are you there? Did you get the question? I heard it. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Great. 
Um, so yes, I do know that there's been a lot of frustration on this. I sort of talked a little bit about some of the issues that folks are working on. Um, one, no, if anyone here is having a problem, you can certainly reach out to my office and we can get through to the ledge liaisons and make sure they're getting your issues. We've been dealing with those on one-offs when people can't get through. We are getting response. It may take some few days. What is your office information? And that is, you can do it at Kathy at heatherstains.com. C-A-T-H-Y at heatherstains, S-T-E-A-N-S dot com. And we will make sure we follow up on those. But you do, I gave the times that you're supposed to be reaching out. They are hiring and going to outside additional phone um, uh, phone experts that they're bringing in too. They're going to another contracted site too to try to take more call volume to try to reduce the problem. Um, also, I know there's been some issues on the job links, wondering whether you have to sign up for that too. You don't. During this period of pandemics, waive the rule about job links. You don't have to worry about registering there. I think that was part of the question as well. Okay, great. Um, I think we're ready then for the next question. Okay, okay. The next, the next question, question is, will there, will there be an extension, extension of COBRA, COBRA future under future legislation passed by, passed, by passed by Congress? So this has been a question that many have asked us. People who are um, have insurance, have had insurance from their employer, being able to stay on that insurance. But as you know, currently the way that program works is that the employee or former employee has to pay 100% of what is being, um, uh, of the employer, of the employer portion. So in other words, a lot of money in order to stay on the insurance policy. Well, when we had the, uh, the recession, um, in 2008, there actually was a program where the government stepped in and paid the full amount of the extension of COBRA. That's what we want to do. And in a future bill, hopefully not very far in the future, that's exactly what the Democrats are, are planning on. And hopefully we'll get some support. My understanding from a call today um, with Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic caucus is that the president is interested in doing that as well. The problem was he wanted to take the money out of the funds that are going to the hospitals. Um, but it's a start that he understands the problem with, uh, with COBRA. And so we're gonna, we're gonna try and, uh, and, and get, that, get that done. Michael, I, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to this COBRA issue. It's been a big one, especially for people, uh, I heard from a number of union people. Uh, I, you know, I think it's, it's, I don't have anything particularly special to add, uh, just that it, it, it really reveals how um, difficult our current system where so many people get their employment through their, uh, sorry, get their health care through their employment are in this moment, it really shows um, just how fragile that system is. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's very important for Congress and the president to Make sure that people get their health insurance in this moment of, of crisis. Exactly. Never, you know, it's probably never been more important than it is now to make sure that they get their health care. Okay, so let's go on to the uh, the next one. All right. Uh, I am a gig worker or self-employed, and I have applied for benefits, but I haven't received anything. When will I receive the funding? How will I apply? Just a giggle. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Um, over. So yeah, so yeah. The, the yeah, the you the you guys thank Congress. They did pass the pandemic unemployment assistance part of the program, which does in fact provide a hundred percent federally funded benefit unemployment benefits to um, folks that are self-employed or gig workers. Now, I understand that while Congress did its job really nicely, that Department of Labor, U.S. Department of Labor on Friday sort of made some narrow definitions on some of these things and have been putting out very complicated regulations. It's taking the states a long time to get through all that, and you, it's a brand new program that they have to build, something that would usually take a year. They're trying to get done now in four to six weeks. I believe by May 11th, middle of May, is what the governor is saying when we should be able to get those benefits out the door to folks. Um, but the, 
while you're not going to get it till then, it will be retroactive to the beginning of your unemployment. And in your first check, you can get all that back pay. The other back unemployment compensation, excuse me. If you're also eligible for the 600 additional dollars, you'll also see that in your first checks. So while you may not be able to apply in for a couple more weeks and get it, it will at least be retroactive and you'll get the dollars back to the inception of your unemployment and when you were first eligible. Can I ask one quick question. So my husband is a real estate agent and he also drives for ride share. So which, which um, umbrella should he apply for unemployment under? Mm, that's a good question. Um, Michael, do you know the answer to that? The, the kind of dual opportunities, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, my my advice, actually, I'd, I'd be interested in, in senators uh, in this in the senator's response to this too. My advice would be to start with both and see what uh, the unemployment uh, the unemployment office says makes more sense. I would agree with that. And I would also say that the area that it seems like they've been narrowing it more in terms of what the Department of Labor did is around the uh, more of the Uber and the Lyft kind of drivers. If there's an app still available, it seems like they've narrowed down. But you could still get on to it and get jobs, even though, of course, very few people are out there getting rides, um, that that's where they've narrowed it. So it may be more challenging in that regard, but I still think at this point, and we'll still, you know, the Illinois Department of Employment Security has not put out its guidance yet on this. They just got this Friday. They're waiting through. They say that their guidance should be out by the end of this week. So we'll have a lot more information then. Also, that the Democrats are going to be really pushing back because when we passed the CARE Act, it was very clear who was being covered. And if they now want to renege on some of that, they're going to really hear from, from us, not just from the, the people that are um, suffering because of, of, of any bad decisions that they make. But we also do have to understand that because these uh, folks, contract workers, et cetera, um, have never been part of the unemployment system, that the state, and I, I really do think that the, the governor's doing a, a great job and that our legislators are helping um, that um, it takes a while to set up a new program. And that's pretty much what has to be happening in, in, in every state. Um, and so, you know, the good news, as you heard from Senator Staines, is that that money is retroactive. I know that people need it now. I get that. Um, but the, the, it is retroactive. Um, and, and so um, it's, it's, it's happening and we'll be fighting to make sure that all those workers are, that we understood to be included are included. Um, Let's go on to the next call. All right. All right. So our next question is, uh, will receiving stimulus under this legislation take away SNAP or Medicaid benefits I'm already receiving? to understand that the answer is no it won't interfere at all with the money that is coming and you know we're, we're talking about um, um, twelve hundred dollars um, for adults up to seventy five thousand dollars a year and after that uh, diminishes up to ninety nine thousand um, dollars but um, so those, those checks are not contingent on anything else. That money is going to go um, to, you know, er, and $500 for every child. There is a max though, what is it, 39, what is it? Well, I'll, I'll get you the exact, uh, the, the exact number. The exact number, it goes up to, I'm not saying it. Ah, three thousand four hundred dollars will be the the max that that people can get, um, but that money will just come to you. Anybody else want? To, um, did you? Do you want to add uh, can you? Or Heather? Let's go on to the next question. All right. All right. So, uh, the, the next question is: If stimulus. Uh, checks are twelve hundred dollars for people who make less than seventy-five thousand. That doesn't cover rent for one month for most of my friends. 
Will there be more stimulus checks coming? Why are we not regulating or overseeing how big corporations use their money? How do we know the corporations will just buy back their own stocks? Well, that's kind of a two-part question. I'm going to take the first part, Michael, and then I'm going to give you the second part about the um, how we're watching the uh, corporations. So um, the, the, the first part of that question, 100% agree with you. That money is not enough. And so what we're looking for when we go into another piece of legislation is a monthly check that comes to people. Um, you know, there's been various proposals uh, from 1000 to $2,000 uh, a month as long as this coronavirus crisis continues and people can't work. Um, and so we are definitely looking at more money. I, I know, I mean, it, it's a little help, but when it comes to um, paying the rent, putting the food on the table, although that's a whole other issue, um, we're really trying to make sure that food availability is robust um, for everyone. Um, but um, you know, this really is uh, just kind of a down payment, I think, on, on, on what people need. We're well aware of it. I'm supporting legislation, by the way. Um, Ilhan Omar introduced that would say $2,000 uh, a month during this during this crisis. So we're going to be. I thought about overseeing um, what the corporations are doing with money they're getting. Yes, thank you. Thanks for that. But it's a really important question. I don't have great news on this front, unfortunately. There's been um, some unfortunate developments. So the bill, uh, the CARES Act did include some restrictions uh, and some oversight and accountability mechanisms, at least it envisioned those for this $500 billion fund that is going to go to corporations uh, at the discretion essentially of the Secretary of the Treasury. Unfortunately, President Trump has decided to ignore most of those uh, restrictions and accountability. In, in fact, when he signed the bill, he issued a signing statement saying that he was going to um, ignore those uh, flat out. Uh, and unfortunately, most of the other restrictions that are in the bill are, are not really strong enough to force Secretary Mnuchin to follow them. So for example, uh, Congress at the request of congressional Democrats put in some really smart restrictions on the use of buybacks. So using this money to just buy up the company's own stock. In theory, uh, the companies really can't do that, aren't supposed to be able to do that. But unfortunately, Secretary Mnuchin can waive those requirements. And given his uh, past uh, support for such measures, I, we don't know if he will, if he will do that. The, the biggest thing that I'm concerned about, honestly, and that I think, um, I hope, policymakers are thinking about for the next round is companies, very large companies are going to get their money much faster and with much fewer uh, strings and hoops than small businesses. Uh, unfortunately, that was mentioned earlier, the small business program, the PPP program is, is having some uh, startup costs. Um, I'm worried that the big companies are going to use the money to improve their position at the expense of smaller companies. So. We really do need to impose some strong restrictions on the use of that money to ensure that companies don't just get bigger and and muscle out kind of smaller companies in this moment of crisis. Um, and and unfortunately, right now that that's not that's there aren't any real real restrictions on that right now. Can I have actually? Can I ask another question? I'm so sorry. No. No. ask a question Go ahead, so, uh, so I have been in contact with Chase Bank for the last week and a half um, and it's really been very like murky you know and I have a very small business I'm a, I'm I'm I have a lot you know financially wise I'm a good business for their bank you know like I've always been in a good standing with them so now I'm here at this point where the, they may or may not approve my loan and like, 
Well, I, you know, let, let, let me let me inter, interrupt here because I like to. I yes, think sorry. it's sorry. important yes. that um, we listen to what Michael said. It looks like the advantages are going to the larger corporations, and okay, that, so you know, going to get my small business. businesses are having a harder time. And something I haven't thought about before, Michael, that they may use this time to actually improve their position by even buying out companies and taking um, over from the business. From oh, it's the definitely, company. no, I definitely I'm, feel I'm, that. I'm, I'm gonna ask you, please, can you, can you put yourself on mute for, for now? Sure. I have an opportunity Sorry. to ask a lot of questions. Um, and, and then let me also um, just, just say that the, the president has um, been firing his generals, um, he's been, uh, he, he fired the person that was to be head of one of the oversight commission committees that was established by the CARES Act. Um, I mean, it, it's just really difficult this, with this president, um, but we, we're, we're going to press ahead. And the reason I think we can succeed is this. The cause that I'm getting, the cause that Heather is getting, because that that's what is going to members of Congress all over this country, Republican or Democratic. And so I believe that uh, despite the, the, the president, um, we are going to be able to um, to, to try the, rest of the world here, certainly but by the end of the day. still needed this loan to come through. Like appreciate all these questions. We tried to consolidate them. Um, from what we got online. And so, um, Miguel, if you could ask the, uh, the next one. Sure. sure. Congresswoman, Congresswoman, the next question is, I was already on unemployment going into this, and I don't see the $600 in each of my checks. Am I going to get this extra federal funding? Am I entitled to the full unemployment benefit in the legislation, even though I was already on unemployment? Um, the answer is, um, my, yeah. my understanding is that, yes, um, if you're eligible to continue um, after March 28th on unemployment insurance, then you will see the $600 additional um, money. Um, and let me see if uh, Senator Staines or um, that, yep. if Michael wants to add. Yeah. This is Heather. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Um, and there's nothing you need to do to get that extra $600. Um, if you're receiving unemployment compensation, even if it's just a dollar that you're eligible for, you'll get that $600 added on. The administration has already implemented this, and the first checks did go out April 5th that reflected an additional $600. Um, so you should now be getting that with your unemployment compensation checks. Um, and there's nothing special you need to do um, to get that. Um, they should be just getting added on um, in your next uh, check that you see. And, and, and Senator Staines, if I can add to that, the next question would be, um, I am an employee, my employer has reduced my hours, so I am now partially unemployed. I know that my state benefits will be reduced based on my earnings. Would I still receive the $600 uh, federal benefit? Um, yes, you should. You should still get that even for, you should still get the $600 check, um, uh, even if you are just partially unemployed. If you're eligible for unemployment compensation, you're eligible for the $600 check, is my understanding. Uh, can I jump in on a question and comment? In Michael Linden, did you have anything to add to that? Did I lose you? No. Okay. All right. Let's uh, then let's go on to the next question. All right. So the next question, Congresswoman, is: If you worked an hourly W two job for less than a year and did not quit, but were sent home without pay due to COVID, you still qualify for it. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask whoever's talking to be to be on mute right now. Okay. So I, I couldn't hear that. Can you repeat that? Uh, yes. yes. The question was, if if I worked an hourly W-2 job for less than a year and did not quit, 
but was sent home without pay because of COVID issues, do I still qualify for unemployment? My understanding is yes. Um, Heather, anything else to say about that? Yes, but when you can apply might depend on whether you were salaried or not. Um, if you are salaried, you can probably apply now. But if you were an independent contractor or a self-employed a sole proprietor, then you probably can't apply until the May 11th when that part of the program is up and running. But yes, that doesn't mean you won't be eligible. You're still eligible and it will all be due to you retroactively if you're a sole proprietor or independent employee, independent um, a self, you know, self-employed. And, and just to just to jump in, one of the one of the key improvements in the CARES Act of the unemployment benefit is that you don't have to uh, have been usually in unemployment benefits. You have to have been employed for a certain amount of time before you're eligible for unemployment benefits, and that is not true for the pandemic unemployment assistance benefit. So in this case, the question was, you know, I've only been working there for less than a year. Am I still benefit? Can I still benefit? The answer is yes, you can. And that is a specific change that congressional Democrats put into the into the uh, the legislation. Great addition. Your extension ran out. Okay. Hey, um, so can we go to the next question then? Yes. Yes. The next question is: I don't think one check will be enough. I barely paid my rent this month. Will there be any other direct assistance available to individuals? Well, you know, not not so far, except um, let me just say, as I mentioned before, on the unemployment insurance that, um, you know, we, uh, I mean, those, the, the, uh, the stimulus checks um, are insufficient and we think that there ought to be, ought to be more and we're going to be working on that. But I'm going to turn that, Michael, back up. I mean, uh, what what the congressman said is exactly right. There, at, at, so far, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, you muted. Okay, Sh should I start again? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. I was just saying, you know, the congresswoman is is exactly right. Um, in the law, there is it's a one-time payment, but uh, we know that you know, that's not enough for most people. Um, and hopefully, Congress will come back uh, at some point soon and 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 pass additional assistance uh, that is that is robust. And and I think the important thing to think about is that the those payments should be tied to the conditions so they don't turn off. Uh, just after one month or two months, they should continue as long as the economy warrants, which I unfortunately I think will be for some time. Yep. If the UI benefits ended in December and the extensions no longer apply to someone who's ended in December versus someone who ended in January, is there anything I can do for that? Heather? Is Heather, are you still there? Oh, sorry, I guess I was on mute. Um, I, 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 I'm not sure I understood the question. I, th I think it, if, if, if you had lost, if you, right, one of the things that they're done, if, and if Michael jump in if I'm not answering the right question, but if it used to be that it was just 26 weeks you'd be eligible for, you've got a longer period of time now that you're eligible for unemployment benefits under the CARES Act. So if you had ended, you probably are eligible for an extended. Not according to the website. The website says if it ended in December, you're not eligible for an extension. Yeah, the, the new the new benefits, the extended benefits may, I, I can go back and double check, but they may only apply to people who lost their job uh, starting uh, in January. Um, because it's supposed to be a, as a result of the COVID um, effects. Uh, but I can go back and double check. I think yeah. if, if you lost your job prior to that or were receiving, receiving unemployment benefits and they ran out prior to that, uh, you, may, you, may be, um, you, may, you may be ineligible for that, um, which is part of the reason why we do need these direct assistance checks to, to a broader set of people because lots of people need the help, not just people who 
um, who directly lost their jobs in the last few months, although there's millions of those people as well, unfortunately. Heather, anything to add? No, that could be correct. I apologize. I don't know that I understood the question appropriately. Okay. Um, next question, Miguel. Yes, Congresswoman. The next question is, will you support the bill to provide additional hazard pay assistance to the first tier employees during these times? We're talking about people who are on the front lines, I'm assuming, that are the healthcare workers, the people in, uh, in, in nursing homes. I, I would hope that when we talk about um, hazard pay, that we're even talking about the workers at my neighborhood jewel store. Now, I rarely go there now, but when I do, I'm not more than once, once a week, once every other week, um, you know, I, I think about uh, think about those workers. They said that they were told by their uh, by their employer that they could take a um, leave and not be working at the grocery store bagging groceries and um, stocking shelves, but it would be unpaid leave, um, and so you know that's that's not good. So. So what those, they were telling me is, I, I, I need the money. I have to, uh, I have to work. So I think people who are working right now, who are on the front lines, who are doing essential jobs, keeping the pharmacies uh, open, um, taking care of people in the hospital, um, and very, uh, and putting really putting their lives at risk. I think hazard pay absolutely is something that we should do, and I support that legislation 100%. Absolutely. Michael, did you want to say anything about that, about frontline people? I, I just wanted to add, I mean, I, I'm so glad to hear you support that legislation. It doesn't surprise me. You support lots of very good, good legislation. Um, but I, I think it's such an important point because it really reveals how important uh, workers are to our well-functioning economy. And this was true before this crisis. It's certainly true in this crisis, and it will be true after the crisis. And it would be really, I think it's very important for us to recognize how valuable to all of us, these frontline workers from nurses and doctors and pharmacists and paramedics to grocery store workers and farm workers uh, and warehouse workers are they, they are the economy in a very real sense, and it's, um, it's really incumbent upon us to protect them in this moment. Um, trying to absolutely. Change. You know, I've been uh, ordering some things uh, online. Somebody's working to be able to uh, get that product uh, to me. I depend on, uh, on, those on those people, but so many people really are um, putting their lives on the line. Heather, I understand the press, the, uh, the governor made a call asking for people who um, were in the healthcare field um, that they would change some of the um, requirements to allow them, or licensing, allow them to come back. And I understand that we have gotten responses from a, a lot of people, is that right? We've got responses from hundreds of people to do that, and they are coming back and getting employed. I also know that regarding that the issue that um, in places where the state can manage it, they're trying to um, address that very issue and get more um, uh, dollars to some of the frontline workers when it can fit within their appropriation level. Also, not surprised to hear you supporting that legislation. I think we need to be looking at that across the board to the extent that we can. This is that the frontline workers. There's been such a struggle to make sure that they have the equipment that they need. They call it PPE, personal protective equipment. And we have heard so many stories of people going to work without that um, the, the equipment that they need and struggling from the governor on down to try and get the equipment to the, the people who, who need it. And yet many of them have still doing their very best to protect themselves and protect others, gone 
on to, to work to try and save lives. Um, and so um, we definitely want to help those and honor those people. Is there any particular questions for people? Go ahead, uh, Miguel, please. Yes. yes. So the last question is um, regarding the $1,200 stimulus check we're supposed to get. Will we get a letter from the IRS telling us when it's coming, or will it just be deposited in our accounts? Also, is this an advance on our 2020 return? No, it is not an advance on your 2020 return. This is not taxable. Um, and um, the um, we're, we're um, supposed the answer is that you know we we talked about it before that it should come directly to you um, if you have done a tax return um, this year or last year. Oh, so um, I have and, one last uh, question. Yeah, Michael, okay. you know, um, yeah, that the, the, the congressman, the congresswoman is right. Um, the 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 twelve hundred dollar checks are not a, they're not really an advance. You should not think of them as an advance on your twenty twenty tax taxes. They will not affect your twenty twenty taxes. Uh, you, you will you will your your rebate will be the same as it would have in no matter what. Um, there's confusion about that because it's very structured that way but you don't have to worry about that it is it's it's cash for you and you don't have to pay it back or anything like that in terms of getting a, a notice um, the IRS says that it will let you know when the funds have been uh, sent out if you're uh, even if, if they haven't hit your bank account yet but I I wouldn't that that may be pretty spotty I think it's very likely it just shows up in your bank account especially if you have direct deposit without any notice yeah you know um, I th I'm sure there are a ton of questions out there that were not answered. Um, Heather was good enough to uh, give her um, contact information. I want to give you um, mine um, for um, my office. Uh, you can call 076-7100. I'll say it again. 773-506. 7100. If you get a message that says we will call you back within a half an hour, and we've really been keeping up with that. You know, we're all in separate places now, people working from, uh, from, from home, but all the calls are distributed among my staff in Washington, um, where Miguel is um, handling the uh, logistics here. And, um, and my staff in the district, my district offices are in um, Chicago and in Glenview, but everybody now is working at home. We are happy to take your personal questions and handle them um, individually. Um, I know situations are different among everyone, um, and we, we will get a, a, an answer um, for you. Um, uh, Andrew Gachkowski, who is uh, handles a lot of the small business and the um, just the, the CARES Act and how it is applied. Um, but at this point, I'm going to leave a minute um, or two to uh, Michael Linden um, just to add a final comment um, how you see this. Um, and you might even just want to um, speculate on how we end this thing, um, assuming, you know, how, how we check the timing and, and, and what's in store for the, uh, for the economy since. Jim, before we go, can I ask a broader question? Um, thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman. Thanks for having me on here. It's, um, these are some strange times, but it's a real honor for me. My, um, my in-laws are, are from Evanston, uh, and my brother-in-law and his wife and his uh, son James are live in Evanston still to this day. So uh, it's a real it's a real pleasure for me to be be here, even under these very difficult circumstances. Um, you know, I think look, I, I I think we're in for some rough seas. Um, a lot of people are hurting right now. Um, in, in they're worried about their families, they're worried about their health, they're worried about their livelihoods. Uh, and I wish I had great news, 
I think we, I think we are, I think we are in a, in a, in a bit of a, we're, we're in some trouble. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of the policy choices that this current administration and some previous administrations, uh, going back some time, have made have made this a little bit harder for us. So we talked about, you know, people have health insurance through their work, but if they lose their jobs, we talked about how, um, you know, the the government is set up to get money to corporations very quickly, but not very quickly to small businesses. Um, there are, you know vast inequalities by race and gender in this country that are exacerbating these challenges. Um, I'm hopeful that uh, leaders such as, uh, such as yourself um, are going to lead the way and help Congress really get the aid directly to the people who need it as quickly as possible. That's going to help us both defeat the virus and the economy. Um, the last thing I'll, I'll say is from an economics policy standpoint, honestly, the first thing we have to do is stop the spread of the virus. So getting people the protective equipment that they need, as you mentioned, uh, helping governors do whatever they need to do to, uh, to protect people and families, that is the only way that we will get the economy going again. The president's um, desire to reopen the economy, I understand where it comes from, but it is extremely misguided. The only way we are gonna get ourselves back on our feet is by defeating uh, the virus, stopping the spread of the virus. It's a false choice between our health and our economy. Our health is our economy. Uh, so um, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to all of you and I'm happy to answer questions uh, separately as well. Someone just held up a sign um, that said, I can't, um, what is that? Message. <laughs> I can't message. I'm the same way. I can't message. Can I, get a can I ask a quick, quick question? I can't message either. What is? The, I don't know what that means. We can't. Yes. There's, there's, yes, there's the we're, gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna have, have to close this page. Question that that you have. This was a kind of our experiment um, with a new technology for us. We had been uh, zooming and other things before, and uh, didn't work great. But here we are. And I wanted to see if Heather Staines. I want. I appreciate you so much, Heather. Um, you know, um, on Broadway, when we get back in business on Broadway, 5533 Broadway, we have the state senator, the state representative. The county commissioner, uh, the alderman, and the congresswoman there. Um, so we are a one-stop shopping in Chicago, and then a full-time office in uh, England. We can't wait to uh, to get back to that. But